So the Intel Arc A770 graphics card is 14% faster than the 3060, they're saying. And that's at 1080p with ray tracing on, which is interesting. Um, so I took a look at this and we've obviously like talked about this problem with, you know, basically Raja, who was from AMD, pretty much ran AMD graphics down into the dirt, into the ground, pretty much destroying everything that ATI had built up for many years. And then he just quits and goes on over to Intel to create graphics cards. And then what's their big plan? Well, they're going to basically release a GPU that is competitive with an RTX 3060 right at the launch of the 4000 series GPUs, which is just, you know, par for the course with what Raja does with his teams. It's, it's, it's behind the eight ball. The strategy has been proven not to work. And it's just ridiculous at this point. And it's kind of annoying. Uh, the graphics card has been tested across a range of games and out in 11 out of the 17 games, the A770 turns out to be the winner while in two titles, the card matches the 3060 and loses in four AAA titles. And of course, this is basically with the last gen GPU. You can see here they have the uh, 3060 FPS and then of course the A770 FPS. And then over here, the improvements. So the Diofield Chronicle, 0% improvement. F1 2021, 17% improvement on the A770. Resident Evil Village, 15%. Deathloop, no change really, basically, within margin of error. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, plus 4%. Uh, these numbers are also kind of, I mean, to be frank, within margin of error in a lot of these, right? If you're going between 89 and 90, like uh, this testing isn't necessarily spot on. Uh, Dying Light 2, they say is 28% better. Arcade Geddon, 36% better. But in Battlefield 5, it loses by 17%. Metro Exodus, 33% better. Control at 19% better. Guardians of the Galaxy, worse. Uh, Hitman 3, 26% better. Watch Dogs Legion, 21% better. F1 2022, worse by 10%. Ghostwire Tokyo, 4% better. Fortnite, April 2022, they say is 57% better, which is pretty interesting. I mean, we do know that one of the things that Intel wanted to do with their GPUs was target, of course, the kind of, uh, I guess, the gaming cafe crowd. And that does mean targeting in things like Fortnite, Counter-Strike Go, League of Legends, uh, which we had seen earlier, of course, as well from them too, was kind of the strategy that they were going for, selling in the Eastern markets, something like South Korea, China, and those gaming cafes is probably going to be like the target market. But, you know, at the same time, it's just not that impressive. Just not. It's pretty disappointing, unfortunately. The uh, coolest thing about it, for the miners, which obviously we'll want to get our hands on it for, is that it does have 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory across a nice big bus. And you know, we love big buses and we cannot lie. And that is a 256 bit bus. Now that will be 190 watts, but a 256 bit bus of GDDR6 could be some, uh, you know, pretty stellar performance numbers. You know, we could be talking about 60 mega hash a second on ETH. Uh, 120 to 150 mega hash a second, something like that, on depending on how it works uh, on Ergo. Um, probably not going to be seeing good numbers on Flux. If I had to take a bet, it does look like as far as the GPU core clocks go, they're not really hitting uh, quite what the uh, the current you know 3000 series or seven or 6000 series from AMD are hitting. Uh, so you know. Uh, probably nothing really great there, but the memory intensive algorithms, there is potential there. So keep an eye on that. I think the sweet spot though um, would be kind of the step down A770 with only eight gigabytes of GDDR6 because you still get the 256 bit bus. And while yes, the TGP is supposed to be rated at the same, the fact of the matter is, is that with eight gigabytes instead of 16 gigabytes, typically that does mean you reduce the amount of power consumption. So we'll keep an eye on it. Um, I haven't seen any mining performance numbers for this yet, but we'll just have to go ahead and see later on down the line. NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 Founders Edition graphics card leaks out and some cooler, uh, or same cooler, but thicker design. Here you go. We got this kind of 
leaked out in a very weird way. First pictures of the alleged 4080 Founders Edition have been leaked by Kitty Yuko. And it basically looks exactly like the RTX 3090. So nothing too crazy here. Um, so they do say that it is a thicker package with a wider cooler and shroud and much larger fans comprising of seven blades as opposed to the nine blades that were on the 3090 and 3080. So the fan blades, there are two less blades. That's kind of what we've learned. I think as far as everything else, we haven't learned much more, right? We do know that we're getting improvements in the amount of L2 cache. We do know that we're kind of getting like a weird cut down in the memory performance area where I think, yeah, we are getting cut down to a 256 bit bus and it will have the faster, presumably 23 to 24 gigabit per second speeds. Uh, but we're going down from a 320 bit bus to a 256 bit bus. This is generation over generation, right? So the RTX 3080, we had a bigger bus. We got more memory, memory bandwidth because obviously like you can see here, the 4080, uh, 736 gigabytes per second, while on the 3080, we had 760 gigabytes per second. What does this mean? Well, it means on memory intensive algorithms for mining, it won't perform as well. And this is par for the course as far as GPU architecture shifts have been going. We saw it first with AMD and the RX 6000 series moving to infinity cache and reducing the amount of basically the size of the memory bus and kind of compensating with that on the cache side of things. And it looks like Nvidia is following suit with that. So this also does tell me because Nvidia from an architectural standpoint is starting to move towards what AMD did last generation, that AMD architecturally is probably ahead of the game. We are probably gonna see, I think a, a little bit of an upset in the GPU market provided, you know, AMD has the manufacturing to back it up, which is, uh, you know, a tall order, especially with a lot of the shortages and stuff going on and the supply chain issues. So um, if AMD can manufacture enough and be competitive there on the price portion of things, I think architecturally they are ahead at this point, if I had to take a guess, right? So now, as far as the total board power, there is a 20 watt increase as well. So we're getting less memory bandwidth and more power. This doesn't mean necessarily that it won't be good for mining. There could be some situations, uh, you know, in the core intensive areas, core intensive algorithms where the 4000 series could perform quite well. And these could be, of course, like, but not limited to Ravencoin, Flux, Caspa, so on. And really until you get it in hands for a lot of these, it's going to be hard to tell because there is still, you know, some memory uh, that some memory performance that does affect a few of these algorithms, even if they do have some sort of core component to them. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.